Welcome along to J Soccer TV. TV stands for, let's not go there, the place to find out everything you wanted to know and didn't want to know about the J League. And here I am with that, with that mind of useless and not so useless information, the editor of J Soccer magazine, Alan Gibson. Oh, how was us? How was I, Mass? Yes, because it is the morning and uh, there may be viewers elsewhere that are not experiencing morning, so you should say Komichiwa and Con Benoit. But let's get on with the magazine before you die of boredom. Um, what's in it? What's in it this time? Issue number four. Welcome to J Soccer magazine, issue four. Issue three. Issue two. Issue one. And now we're going to do that in Japanese. No, we won't. No, no it's no. not a language lesson. Issue four. As you see on the front cover, we have uh, Hiroshi Kiyotake on his way to Nuremberg and he plays his last game for Cerezo Osaka tomorrow. Cerezo Osaka against Ura Reds. I'll be there. And Cerezo um, are receiving a nice big fat transfer fee for this? They are, thankfully. At least a million euros, which is big yeah. by Japanese standards, considering yeah. that they only got about 300,000 euros for Shinji Kagawa, who's just gone to Manchester United for zillions. And so, yeah, they missed out on that. No settlement clause. Kagawa. I was going to ask you about that, Shinji. Yes, well, uh, they have uh, I hear from service? Cerezo Osaka that they do get a 5% sell-on from Send if he goes to a different market. It's very complicated. But if he'd moved inside Germany, they wouldn't have got anything. But since he's gone to England, a different market, they get 5%. Wow. And they'll get a further 5% if he goes to another market. So if Shinji goes to Spain in a few years, yeah, but if he goes to Yeovil Town, then they're not going to get anything. Who was this traveller you were talking about in there? There's a, there's a guy that sort of travelled just about everywhere, but it's not really on anyone's map. I was, I was looking up his name. Just... Wakui Hidetoshi. That's the one, that's the one. Um, oh, Wakui san. So, it's, what, tell me the story about this guy because um, he looked very interesting. He, he played in Estonia, is that where he's at now? Yeah, he's playing in Estonia right now. And uh, if you uh, read the magazine, I shouldn't give it all away, yeah. shall we? Yeah, yeah he's, he's been all over Slovenia, Austria, Czech Republic, Belarus, and Singapore. Albert Rexon, got to have a team in Singapore, that you see. That's uh, Mr. Wakui Hidetoshi. Um, we always uh, find out the obscure people, uh, thanks to Paul Williams at Asian mm. Football Feast. Thank you, Paul. Good day to you. Uh, in fact, uh, the last magazine we had Ibuski, uh, who's playing in Sevilla Second Division, and uh, he played for the Under-23 team last month. So. And how obscure is he in, in Japan, this guy? <laughs> Have you heard of him? No. No one's ever heard of him. He's played uh, you know, three or four games for a couple of teams before he moved to Singapore and then he's started travelling the world. So I hate to add the office have been told to stay silent here, he's so even obscure. though you said, have you heard of him, they've got to say <laughs> nothing, right? It's not really fair. He's very but, obscure. But he's so obscure that, well, he's in the magazine. So he's not so obscure now. But uh, you mentioned Singapore and um, there's some sort of connection, is there, between... Um, some Japanese clubs. So we're slightly digressing here. Yeah, we? Digressing, but, uh, but Alberic Snigata. Just, uh, just stay with it because I'm talk, going to talk about Thailand. They have an offshoot, yeah. uh, Alberic uh, Singapore. So uh, oh, okay. they, they've loaned a few players here and there and they, they farm a few players out who don't come back like Wakarisa. Mm -hmm. um, it's quite useful. I think Yokohama mm -hmm. have just uh, invested in a Hong Kong team, but let's not go there. That's another story. But what isn't another story? Because it is in the magazine. It's, uh, it's a connection with um, Chomburi. Chomburi Vissel. FC. This all, who seem to be going places, and this all helped things turn out for the best. Uh, I have to throw that in. Always look on the right side of it. Yeah. Well, things are looking looking very bright for um, for Vissel at the moment. Vissel Kobe have uh, tied up oh, oh, with yeah. Chomburi FC, and uh, they have an agreement where they'll be sharing coaches and perhaps in the future maybe sharing players mm. or loaning players here and back and give some of the Vissel kids some experience perhaps. Um, Vissel, of course, have a new coach in uh, Akira Nishino. Uh, the man who's, well, he, uh, he joined, Visip, uh, joined Gambo Osaka and uh, masterminded their rise to the championship mm. and the ACL and uh, then uh, retired uh, last year and he's been dragged in by Vissel just when I thought I was out, they dragged me back in. So he's a little bit like a Guardiola type guy, except slightly Ex older. Yeah, and he hasn't got a silly beard. Yeah. yeah, I'm so glad to hear that. But um, so a major coup for Vissel Kobe getting him. I think so, they had to spend a little money and... Yeah. Uh, do a little dance, but, yeah. uh, you know, and they, they, they could they could end up in um, in the Champions League, do you think? think as well, certainly yeah. in the next year or three. Mm. I think the uh, the aim is for Vissel Kobe to, to grow and grow, base it around the kids, and uh, make a new dynasty. And um, the what was he assistant manager? He's, he stepped up at Gamba, right? And yes, it's not going that well so far. 
Well, that was in uh, issue. Uh, <laughs> no, <laughs> yes, it's something that, that was in issue. Yeah. Yep. Uh, Matsunami is the, uh, the new coach at Gamba. Uh, he's had about eight or nine games so far to, to pull him out of the basement, and they have started to win in the last week or so, <laughs> literally. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, read the J Soccer Magazine issue four for the, uh, the, the gen on uh, how Vissel Kobe lost one coach and grabbed another. It does say Gamba in crisis. Will he bring them out? And so, so what's going wrong there, in your opinion? I think too many changes at once yeah. was a, a big thing. They lost a lot of players. They lost the coach who'd been there for ten years, who just resigned. But you know, he thought he'd done enough, obviously. And they brought in a new guy who, uh, well, it's a long story, but you can read all mm. about it. <laughs> but he's kind of stepped up from the boot room, as it were. Yeah, exactly. Well, so that, in a in a sense, is stability, right? I think he'll do a good job. Eventually, just needs time. How much time? Eventually. How much time does he need? Uh, well, Gamble is too good to go down. Yeah. Hello, Nottingham Forest. <laughs> but um, yeah, I think he'll save them from relegation, and mm. uh, they'll be mid-tabling by the end of the season. Yeah. And then You're next year we'll settle down. But yeah. So mid-table finish, you think? Maybe I hope six. some people say same thing. Is that over optimistic? Uh, we we did we did hear some people saying that top five, top six won't, won't be a problem for Gamble once they start going well. We'll see. Yeah. And something else that won't be a problem is a uh, new stadium. New stadium. Yeah, new stadium for Gamble. 40,000 seats, uh, 28 cameras built in, so we'll be able to mm. see the offside replays and everything. Mm. Yeah, it's, uh, it's going to be good. It's a couple of years to go yet, yeah, but uh, Gamble will have a brand new purpose built stadium, no silly running track, and the president is very excited. Yeah, he was extremely excited. Yes, we had a little chat with him. Yeah. It was ooh, very good goal. And so, what, what generally happens in Japan when, when a team moves to a new stadium? Do their results fall by the wayside? Because it happens in the UK a lot. I sure. don't think it will make any difference whatsoever. No, whatsoever. No. Oh. I think you're totally wasting our time. Then. All right. <laughs> Talking of all waste of time, what about mascots? <laughs> mascots. There's, there's plenty of them featured in, in the magazine. Yes, we've got, we've got J1 mascots in this magazine and J2 mascots in issue 5. Mm. And, and yeah, yeah, mascots are a, a big thing in Japan. Pre game yeah. rituals. And uh, outside the stadium, as you saw on Wednesday night, loads of games for the kids, lots of mm. food and drink. And loads of people come two hours before the kickoff. They go inside, they get their seats, they go back outside again mm. and enjoy themselves. Should be like that the rest of the world. But I've got a bone to pick with you about these mascots. What's going on? Why do they have to be kawaii? Cute though. They're all cute. Well, aren't there any sort of scary mascots? Because you know, in, we've got we've got Millwall's uh, lion. It looks a little bit scary. They kind of tried to tone it down, mm -hmm. and um, yeah. Wolves could be scary, couldn't they? Well, I think you know some of them are a bit, a bit scary, aren't they? I mean, the Considore Sapporo owl looks really evil. Oh it? yeah, he's got a macabre look about yeah, about like, the eyes. Looks like he's been died and brought back to life. Yeah, but yeah, they're all pretty cute, really, aren't they? Yes. So, um, not sure how I can lead into anything else at this point, but um, what about what about the women's game? What about the women's game? <laughs> well, the women's game—they're not scary at all, are they? Uh, the women's game is featured, of course, uh, in the J Soccer Magazine. Uh, we got some <laughs> Nelisco pictures, uh, and of course, uh, the Olympic uh, Games start very soon, and the ladies will be going to London. Um, well, to defend their number one position in the world, they are World Cup winners, of course. So uh, the ladies have uh, high expectations. And so, the men's Olympic team, do you think they're going to do well? I don't know. The under 23. I mean, let's face it. Teams like Brazil and Italy and whatever, they are bringing mm. some very, very good players, aren't they? And they've got some quite tough group games as well. Right? Yeah, but I think Japan. Uh, they should get through the group stage. Well, they get through the group stage, and then you know, mm. then it's anyone's game, as England found out when they really should have beaten Italy. And the games are, are sort of spread out, aren't they? The first game is in Glasgow. Yeah, Glasgow. Well, the games are all over. It's not Newcastle the London Olympics. And Coventry. Coventry. Yeah. yeah, it's been like. To be sent to Coventry. Yeah, exactly, and that's what, exactly what's happening to the Japanese uh, Olympic team. And then, um, how many are there going to be any players from university playing in that Olympic team? Which leads me on to another article about uh, players plucked from high schools and universities. Oh, my best mate, Rio Miyagi. Miyagi Rio, yeah. yeah. Went straight from high school to, to Arsenal. And then you're talking about his brother in there as well. Yeah, I didn't know anything. So. He didn't know his brother. His brother's oh. bigger and taller and stronger. Oh. Whether uh, Arsene Wenger or like him so much, who knows? Uh -huh. But yeah, uh, high schools and universities are very big in Japan. A lot of players stay through the high school and university, even though they're good enough to sign professional forms. They stay with the high school. There's a picture of Honda here, who could easily have joined the club long before that. Uh, stayed in the high school. Nagatomo, who's now playing at Inter Milan, stayed on at university. 
mm. until you know these players they, they wait till the end of their education and mm. then they join. It's pretty good. Yeah, it's a very nice thing to happen, don't you think? I well, really do think so because you know they get an education and they get a football footballing career later on. Well, I always said, get yourself a trade. Yeah. So I think we've more or less covered everything, haven't we? Um, did I, did we mention Usami? Perhaps we didn't. Well, Usami is. Well, actually, you did, did just Usami. ask if any players are coming from university in the Olympics. Well, we don't really know yet because they've got to whittle down the squad from the 35 that they got now to the 18 who are going to London. But I hope that uh, Takashi Usami, who was featured on the cover of J Soccer Magazine issue one, uh -huh. and interviewed inside, and. Uh, he sort of had a bit of a fallout with the under-23 team, even he was only 18 at the time. And uh, he was, you know, substituted here and there and he didn't get to play. And I think he basically thought he wanted to play, you know, um, which is unusual in Japan to actually, you know, show that. Sort so of you're thing. saying he's got a slight attitude? Yeah, I think which he's, is got, very unusual he's got a bit of an attitude, but mm. I think it's a good attitude and uh, he's played his, played he's his way back in. He's a winner. Uh, he's played his way back in and uh, he's, he's doing well. Yeah. Okay, uh, one more. One more thing I didn't mention. The legend that is. What is his name? Kamamoto. The legend. Mr. Kunishige Kamamoto was, really is the legend of Japanese football. I think uh, if you look in the magazine here, a uh, four page interview with him, and uh, he scored like uh, 77 goals in 76 games or something like that for Japan. And, uh, you know, he's, he's getting on a bit now, but he came yeah. along and he gave us lots yeah. of memories in this very office, very exactly where you're sitting now. And um, funnily enough, he, he was the youngest player ever to score 10 goals for Japan until last month when Shinji Kagawa. Oh, yeah, I thought you were pointing at me. Yeah, well, not, not Joe. Shinji Kagawa scored for Japan, 10 yeah. goals for Japan and became the youngest player to score 10 goals for Japan, beating Kamamoto's uh, record. So very topical. And of course, they're both featured in the magazine. Right. So that's why you must buy it. And uh, your email address is if you want to buy a copy of this said magazine. Uh, please email alan at jsoccer.com, A-L-A-N at jsoccer.com, or go straight to the website, www.jsoccer.com. Click on the links, look around, and you'll be able to buy the magazine or the PDF right there. And don't forget, visit thelooscannon.co.uk if you can't get enough of me, and I'll, I wouldn't blame you. I'm really hoping that Kari Sweat will uh, sponsor the next magazine too, so we shall see how we allow have that sponsorship as well. So, anyway, that's all for now. I'll, I'll let you finish off with those two rude... Naughty words. No, you're, can't you're not going to do it like right. Alf Wiedersen. <laughs> Alf Wiedersen, is that spelled right? Yeah, I hope so. Yeah, so I'm not too sure about <laughs> it. Good luck to Kiyotake in Germany. Alf Wiedersen, choose to you, Kiyotake. Okay, so Thank that's what we're saying this time. Alf Wiedersen, Alf Wiedersen, pet. J Soccer TV.